I'm going to have the kids come up. While you're on the way up, I want you to look for God and tell me if you found him. I'm not playing games on my phone. How you guys doing? Good? Did you find him? Did you find God? Right there? Have you ever uh, played hide and seek when you were little? You still play it. But now you're a little more serious about it. But what about with your parents when you were like tiny? Do you remember? Playing hide and seek where your parents, maybe your dad would hide. Or your mom. You hid inside the door. But did you ever have your parents kind of hide and make it kind of easy? Yeah, where you kind of almost ran into them? (laughs) Maybe you ran by them a few times and they didn't say anything? And then did you ever run into them? And what'd they say when you ran into them? Bingo. You found me. Sometimes God does that. We think we can look under the rocks, we can look under the pews, we look look all over the place, and God is everywhere. But a lot of times he allows himself to be found, and times he comes to us. In Isaiah 65, I revealed myself to those who did not ask for me. Wow. He revealed himself. Isn't that something? I was found by those who did not seek me. They weren't even looking, and they found him. Now, how does that make you feel when you're, like, having a really bad day, and you feel far from God? Well, he's going to, He seeks us out. He seeks us out. It's not all about us. It's about what he has done. He sought us out. So even when we're having a bad day, and maybe we feel far from him, he's going to seek us. He's going to seek us. And that that can be comforting. Pray with me once. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you sent Jesus into human flesh to dwell among us. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Grace, peace, and mercy from God, our Father, and Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Lord, where are you to be found? And that's the question we normally ask. The sermon's based on the Isaiah text. But you could even look in the gospel text. And it relates because a lot of times we take, God, where are you? Where are you to be found? And the Old Testament text actually says, seek the Lord while he may be found. But sometimes we turn it into the other. Or sometimes we turn the gospel message from Matthew. Say, why would you let that person in? They've only been, they've only believed in you for an hour. And that's, that's the parable. They receive the same. And then we get angry. You ever lost your keys or wallet? No? I lose my keys all the time. If I don't put them in the same place, they're gone. (laughs) Do you ever look and look and look and never find it? And then all of a sudden you give up? And then it's sitting on the kitchen counter or the table. (laughs) And then it's like there's nothing covering up. 
It's like right there. There's a cause for this. It's called inintentional blindness. This is a real thing. Here's how it incurs. Mental workload and task interference. Sometimes we're so busy, we can't see what's there. And it, literally, the mind, it's like pfft, nothing there. Because we're thinking about maybe what's for dinner or worrying about other things or what we're going to do tomorrow or worrying about our problems that come up, the arguments we might have, the disagreements. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. We tend to think about God through our own eyes, through our own thought process, through our own human reasoning. We tend to think of him as like finding our keys. Where are you? Where are you? And that's the problem. We think of it on our own terms. If I am good enough, well, hang on a sec. Thought about this. I was looking at this. Wasn't even. (laughs) If things are just right, I'm a symmetrical person. You know, I like a front door right there and the windows on the side. Drives my wife nuts because she's not that way. But, you know, if things are a little off, it's okay. You know? Back in Martin Luther's time when they started the services away from the Catholic Church, when he started the Mass, They all wanted to, except Luther, take every saint statue out of the church. We can't have that. And Luther's like, leave them. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just leave them. They took them out. We tend to think with our human eyes, our human reasoning, Where is the Lord to be found? We tend to think of it as, well, if I'm good enough, if I do X, Y, Z, I'm going to be okay. We tend to think like Pharisees because they took what was salvation through faith, even in the Old Testament, and they turned it into law that were saved by the law. And then they took the law and just Increased it more and more and more. But where is the Lord found in the Old Testament? Where is he found? The cloud by day, the pillar of fire, the burning bush, The tabernacle, the tent of meeting, specifically. Where is he to be found? Sometimes we tend to think if we have the right music, if we have the right pastor, if we have the right setting, we will find him and people will flock.
But God is found in his temple specifically. He always has been. He always will be. The problem is today we're like, well, I got Jesus in my heart. I'm not saying he don't because he's omnipresent. He is everywhere because he's omnipresent. But he is specifically in Jesus now. In the Old Testament, he was in the temple. That was his presence in the temple. Isaiah 66, and they will bring all your people from all nations to my holy mountain in Jerusalem as an offering to the Lord on horses and chariots and wagons and mules and camels, says the Lord. They will bring them. As the Israelites bring their grain offerings to the temple of the Lord in ceremonial vessels. That was when they returned from Babylon. And Jesus, Jesus, Jesus wasn't here yet. God sought them out when they were exiled to Babylon. He sought them out. Another reading of this text, another you got to realize, Hebrew and Greek, there's a lot of meanings to the words. They don't just mean one. And as you look at it as, I don't know Hebrew, so I rely on other scholars who can interpret it. And I listen to them as they're interpreting it. Seek the Lord while he can be found. The, the other reading, seek the Lord while he allows himself to be found. We always think it's us discovering. <laughs> he, he came to us. God sent Jesus down to earth, not the other way around. God chose you before you were even born. More and more and more in this country, I can't say for other countries, but it's about what we do. And the church, it's going to struggle. People are going to go after other doctrines that they like to hear. Get itchy ears to go after others instead of the true word. God was in the temple in Israel. God also sought them out when they were in captivity. And he seeks us out. But our response is we come to his house to hear his word. Jesus, the incarnate word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the words of Christ. Specifically in hearing about him. And then we could add, well, pastor, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. That's not logical. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than yours, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. <laughs> you know, and thank God for that. Because if it's up to us, what happens sometimes during the week? Maybe even sometimes on Sunday. Sin. <laughs> Sin. Because if it's up to us, we're going to fail. But God calls. 
Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him. And he does. He has compassion on us. He has so much compassion on us, he sent his son down to earth into our flesh to experience what it was to be human. And it wasn't for the experience, it was for the forgiveness of sins for us that he would pay for all those on the cross. The reason I said experience is he knows what we're suffering. He knows what we're going through. But God has prepared a victory feast. And he has invited us all. Seek the Lord where he may be found. The world needs to hear, the United States needs to hear, where is he found? In his house, in his church. That's a specific place. Yes, we can pray to him outside the church. Yes, we can ask for forgiveness of sins outside the church. But just as he was found in the temple, he's found amongst his people. Whether we're out in that field worshiping him, under the trees over here, or inside this place. Wherever his word is spoken, he is found. Faith comes by hearing and by hearing the words of Christ. That sweet honey that tells us all that we have done, all that we have fought, all that we have not done is forgiven on account of Christ. As I was preparing this sermon and as I was thinking about it, I thought, boy, this, today would have been a really good day to have communion. <laughs> I almost did it. I almost, I almost just said, hey, we're going to do it. Because he is specifically found wherever the word is attached in baptism because it's attached with the word in the spoken word, the word of God, Jesus, the incarnate. His body and blood found in communion. Because even though we can see it, it is still bread and wine, we know and we, we receive it by faith that he is in and under the bread and the wine for us. And we just thank God for that. Where is God to be found? Those who seek, God can rest, be rest assured he is where he promises to be. In the Old Testament, it was the Jerusalem temple. It was the place he caused his name to dwell. It's from Deuteronomy 12.5. And then the temple got destroyed. And then Jesus told the, the Pharisees and the church leaders, destroy this temple and I will raise it up in three days. And they're like, ha, it took us like 46 years to build this temple. <laughs> they actually said that to him. It's not what he was talking about. <laughs> and we know that. We know that. That temple can never be destroyed. He invites us daily to return to him. To confess and receive pardon. We do that at the beginning of the service. And he forgets our sin as far as the east is from the west. I'll try not to go too long. But as I was listening to these professors who are fluent in, in Hebrew, one of them said, 
and someone else in the church and I were talking, and I've heard this a couple times, but it didn't register when we were talking. But this professor said, you know, we're not Protestant. We're Lutheran. We're sacramental. We believe that God's word works, and it works through baptism. It works through his body and blood in communion. And we know when we come into this place and we hear his word, his word does not return void. I haven't looked at the text for next week in Isaiah, but that's, that comes up in Isaiah in chapter 56. It accomplishes its purpose of what it's intended for. He will dwell in Jesus forever. Jesus sits at the right hand of God. Jesus, the suffering servant, the son and heir of David. And how do we know this? How do we know it? Remember when you were in like maybe first grade or (laughs) Sunday school, maybe preschool? The Bible. (laughs) very simple it tells us in the Bible seek and you shall find and you will find the best treasure of all that he has for us eternal life Amen